Okay, nearly there, just two questions left. We're going to do an integration question that doesn't give you any clues of how to do it, and it's got some limits as well. Now, I look at this question, I think there's probably two ways that we could do this. We could either do a substitution or we could do integration by parts. I'm gonna try integration by parts just because that's the topic that we've been looking at most recently. So I'm gonna integrate between zero and two, two x times the square root of x plus two with respect to x. So I'm going to say that u is equal to 2x, which means u dash is 2, and v dash is my x plus 2 to the half. So I'm going to integrate this. I'm going to increase the power to 3 over 2, and I'm going to take it to 2 over 3. It looks like this. OK, so this should be equal to, let me just put that as a separate box so I don't get confused. We've already got those two done. So first of all, we're going to have these two things multiplied, and we're going to have them as limits. So this times this would be 4 over 3x, x plus 2 to the 3 over 2 between 0 and 2. And we're going to minus the integral between 0 and 2 of this times this, which is 4 over 3 x plus 2 to the 3 over 2 dx. So we have 4 over 3 x, x plus 2 to the 3 over 2, from 0 to 2, minus, let's actually integrate this, so I'm going to increase the power from 3 over 2 to 5 over 2, and I'm going to multiply it by the 2 over 5 to, in, to counteract that, but remember I've still got the 4 over 3 that is there as well, and that's between 0 and 2. Combining these limits together, I'm going to have 4 over 3x, x plus 2 to the 3 over 2, minus 8 over 15, x plus 2 to the 5 over 2. Now, I'm sure there's some simplification that could happen here, but I actually think we could probably go in with a bit of substitution and hoping we're going to come up with something that looks a bit like this. So I'm going to substitute 2 in, first of all. So I'm going to have 2 substituted in here will be 8 over 3 multiplied by 4 to the power of 3 over 2. When I substitute in 2 here, I'm going to have 8 over 15 times by 4 to the power of 5 over 2. That's substituting 2 in. When I substitute in 0, luckily this whole thing is going to disappear. So I'm just going to have the second part, which will be minus 8 over 15 times by 2 to the power of 5 over 2. OK, let's just do a few things to save a bit of time. Let's do 4 to the power of 3 over 2 on the calculator. This is 8. So 4 to the power of 3 over 2 is 8. So 8 times 8 over 3 is 64 over 3. Now we're going to do 4 to the power of 5 over 2. 4 to the power of 5 over 2 is 32. And 32 times 8 over 15 is 256 over 15. Then all I've got here is plus 8 over 15 multiplied by 2 to the power of 5 over 2. Now your calculator is not going to be very good at handling that. So you need to think about what 2 to the power of 5 over 2 is. Well, it is 2 to the power of a half to the power of 5. So I've got 64 over 3 minus 256 over 15. This bit simplifies to 64 over 15 plus 8 over 15 times by the square root of 2 to the power of 5. Now, just carefully think, because your calculator is not super good at this. We've got the square root of 2 times 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 the square root of 2. We're multiplying it by itself five times. That's going to be a 2. That's going to be a 2. And we've got a root 2. So it's 2 times 2 times root 2. So it's 4 root 2. So what we end up with is 64 over 15 plus 8 over 15 times 4 root 2. Let's leave the root 2, so we've got 8 over 15 times 4. So we get 64 over 15 plus 32 over 15 root 2. Look what they wanted. They wanted 32 over 15, 2 plus root 2. Yeah, that's what we've got. Let's take out 32 over 15. That's the 2 plus root 2. So that was my method using integration by parts. You could try this yourself using integration by substitution. 
one question left, I believe. It's the parametric question that lots of people didn't like here. So the first thing we've been told is we've been told that x is 3 plus uh, 2 sine t and y equals 4 plus 2 cos 2t. This is going to be really important later on. So I'm going to put an exclamation mark there. We're going to be using that later on. Show that all points on c satisfy y equals 6 minus x minus 3 squared. So I have x equals 3 plus 2 sine t, and I have y equals 4 plus 2 cos 2t. Alert. The argument here does not match the argument here, so we're going to need to make those things match up with each other. Right, let's deal with this side first of all. I'm going to say that y equals 4 plus 2 lots of cos 2t. Now, because this one's to do with sine, I could try and match it in terms of sine, actually. So I'm going to say that cos 2t is 1 minus 2 sine squared t. That's something you should know off by heart. So y is equal to 4 plus 2 minus 4 sine squared t. So y is equal to 6 minus 4 sine squared t. I'm actually really close. All I need to do is find out what 4 sine squared t is. Well, x minus 3 is 2 sine t. If I square this, I get x minus 3 squared. Careful when you square this. Make sure you square the 2 as well. You get 4 sine squared t. Great. I now know what 4 sine squared t is. So y is equal to 6 minus 4 sine squared t, which is this thing here, which is x minus 3 squared. That's the thing that they were looking for us to say that we had here. Then it asks us to sketch the curve C. Well, look, here's my exclamation mark. In order to sketch this curve C, we're going to need to think carefully about the domain and the range, OK? We have been told that t is between 0 and 2 pi. There we are, labelling my questions again. t is between 0 and 2 pi. So we need to think about what happens for the x part. Now, we're going to see what values you can get from x. Well, <coughs> if t is between 0 and 2 pi, let's think about what sine can be between 0 and 2 pi. The values of sine between 0 and 2 pi, you could get anything between, uh, looks like you can get anything between 1 and minus 1. So if I'm going to try and build it up to make it look like this, I could see that 2 sine t, I could get any value between 2 and minus 2. And if I add 3 to that, so I get 2 sine t plus the 3 to make it look like x, I would get that x can be between adding um, 3 to both sides, uh, 1 and 5. So this is telling me this thing which is x can be anywhere between 1 and 5. Now let's have a think about what happens to y. We've got to start off with that it's between 2 pi and 0. And we're going to see what happens to cos of 2t in that particular period. So we're going to say that instead of it just going between 0 and 2 pi, we're going to say, wow, it's going to go all the way to, that's not my cos graph, it's going to go two lots of it. Well, we can see again that cos 2t is going to vary between minus 1 and 1. If I double that, and then if I add 4 to it, I double this, and then I add 4 to it, I double this, and then I add 4 to it, I get that it can be between, I just want to double check that, minus 2, add 4, yep, 1, add 4, yep. I get that it can be between 6 and 2, and that's what my y values can be. So I can actually sketch what this is going to look like. We know a few things about what this graph should be. In fact, I've even got it written here. We know what this graph is going to look like. It's going to be a quadratic. It's going to be that shape. And it has a turning point. And the turning point is going to be when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 6. We also know these conditions. So let's get all of this put onto a sketch. The turning point is at 3, 6. So I'm going to put my turning point there. x, though, can only be between 1 and 5. y can only be between 2 and 6. Now, when x is 1, if you look at this, you get 1 minus 3 squared, which is 4. y is 2. So you get this part here. When x is 5, you get 5 minus 3 squared, which is 4, and you get 6 minus 4, 
which is 2. So the only part of the parabola that you actually get, the only part of the quadratic that you get, is this particular part, because the domain is between 1 and 5, and the range is between 1 and 6. Okay, this is more important than this one in helping us to sketch it. It says, sketch the curve C. So there we go, for two marks, we've sketched that correctly. Explain briefly why C does not include all points of the graph. It doesn't include all points. because of the restriction on the parameter t, which says that t is in between 0 and 2 pi. And we've got enough reasoning here to show the examiner what we're talking about. Very difficult last question. The line with equation x plus y equals k, where k is a constant, intersects c at two distinct points. State the range of values of k, writing your answer in set notation. So we need to say that there is going to be a line which has x plus y equals k. There's going to be a line that intersects this, and we want, to it, we want it to intersect at two particular points. Whew. So if we rearrange this, we get y equals minus x plus k. So we can clearly see it's going to be some kind of sloping line. Now here is no good, because here it's only going to cross it at one point. We need to find the places where it's going to cross it at two points. Now it looks like it's going to cross it at two points there, and the last place, in fact, where it crosses it at one point, is there. Now this line is going through this one end point here, and it's definitely going to go through this point here. So this coordinate is 5, 2. So when x is 5, y is 2. So we get 2 equals minus 5 plus k. So k is equal to 7. Right, that's referring to the fact it's crossing at 7. So we know when k is bigger than 7, it's going to cross at two distinct points that we've got here. So I'm going to start off by saying that k is going to have to be um, less, bigger than or equal to 7, because it's actually allowed to be equal to 7 there, because it will still cross in two places. The other thing we need to find out about now is when is it, a, when is it going to be a tangent to that curve? So we're going to do some work with uh, the discriminant here. We haven't really done anything with the discriminant yet. So I want y equals minus x plus k, and my other equation, which is y equals 6 minus x minus 3 squared. I'm going to solve these things and find out what the discriminant is for their solution. So I'm going to make these two things equal. So that's 6 minus x minus 3 squared equals minus x plus k. So that's 6 minus x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals minus x plus k. So that's 6 minus x squared plus 6x minus 9 equals minus x plus k. Get this all onto one side with 0. So I'm going to say I've got x squared if I'm putting it onto this side. Um, and I'm going to minus the 6x here, so that's minus 7x. And then I've got 6 minus 9, that's minus 3, so that becomes plus k plus 3. Let me just double check I've done that right. So that's, yep, yep, that's good. Now, I want this to just be a tangent, so that means I'm going to want b squared minus 4ac to be equal to 0. So b is minus 7, a is 1, and c is k plus 3. So I'm going to get b squared, which is 49 minus 4 times a times c, I want that to be equal to 0. So 49 minus 4k minus 12 is equal to 0. So 4k is equal to 37. So k is equal to 37 over 4. So when k is 37 over 4, we get the tangent. And remember, that's going to be referring to 37 over 4 up here. We need k to be less than that, so it intersects inside this region that we've got here. So the bit we're going to say is we want k to be less than. It can't be equal to it, because if it's equal to it, it's going to just be crossing it at one place. So the two things we need to combine are this and 
this, and we're going to put that together using set notation. So in set notation, we can say that the solutions are k such that k is greater than or equal to 7 and less than or equal to 37 over 4. A very challenging question to set out um, a full understanding of equations and graphs, really. So if you've got all this way, well done, everyone, um, and I will see you soon.